Hello, everybody. Aston Villa did not play this weekend. So pretty much the most exciting thing I did was get my hair cut. About three months overdue, but finally I did it. Uh, I'm now very cold on my ears here in the freezing cold UK. Um, but, you know, when Villa don't play at the weekend, it's always a bit like I just sit around staring into space, a bit like that uh, that meme of Pablo Escobar in Narcos where he's just sat on that swing looking out, not sure what to do with himself. Um, so, yeah, a bit, bit, of, a bit of a loss, but... Um, the most the biggest thing at the moment is that Aston Villa are now just what just over 24 hours from when I'm recording this until the end of the transfer window. Now Villa have been linked to a lot of players uh in January. I think Matteo Guendouzi is probably the big name everybody's been looking out for. Um the Gerard de la Foya was another name that we got linked to. Uh Moussa Dembele at uh Lyon. Um, but we have signed Jon Duran and we have signed Alex Moreno. Now, a little bit more on them in a minute. But uh, ultimately, do I think Villa are going to sign anyone now before the end of the transfer window? I mean, I could end up look, looking like a complete Wally here, but uh, I don't, I'm, I'm starting to think maybe not. Uh, at the end of last week, I thought Gwen Doozy might happen, but I'm sort of thinking it ain't. It ain't going to happen in the next 24 hours. Never know. Um, he could appear in a picture with a smiling Yuan Lang uh, <laughs> randomly on Instagram. Um, but uh, no. Uh, so what does that mean about the squad? Because, look, Unai Emery, Professor Unai, uh, has uh, let quite a few players go. Ludwig Augustinsson has gone to Real Mallorca. Um, Morgan Sanson, Frederick Gilbert, both to both to Strasbourg. Uh, Danny Ings is the highest profile one. He's gone to uh, West Ham for fifteen million pounds. Now, up front and centre back with Jan Bednarek also going back to Southampton. They're probably the two positions you would look at in the squad. I think we look a little bit like that. Well, we look quite like very light there if there's an injury, and. <sighs> It, if Aston Villa are pushing for Europe, uh, as is very possible given our form and where we are in the table, if we're pushing for Europe later on this season, and let's say Ollie Watkins gets an injury or a concert or a Mings, yes, it could come back to bite us uh, if you know the squad depth is just isn't there. Um, now, I think Ings that that signing uh, to me it. it or that sale, sorry, it, it made it did make sense because ultimately he ain't never quite looked like he fitted in at Villa. Uh, it, I'd not really convinced he was Unai Emery's type of player. Um, so uh, I think getting that bid uh, for a player of his age and the wages he was on, I'm not sure we could have ever really got better than that. And maybe it was just an opportunity for Emery that was too good to turn down because ultimately it will mean that we have money available now that's been freed up that we can, you know, use again, hopefully in January. It'd be nice if we could get a replacement. But if it means it has to be in the summer, then fair enough. Um, I'm not, I don't think Villa have at all failed in this window. Um, I think it's been, uh, they've signed, you know, made two decent signings. Um, we're not actually in any competing for any trophies now we're probably not going to get dragged back into the relegation zone uh scramble please god um but yes the lightness in the squad so whereas it's not going to you know cost us in any trophies that we might go for yes it could it could stop us reaching into europe um as the season goes on but uh ultimately you know all this, this the uh money that's been freed up that is going to be able to be used at some point uh, in the near future. And, you know, January is a very difficult time to get the players you want. Um, I have no doubts that Villa have been, you know, when when they're inquiring about players, have been given, you know, very asked for high wages and for very high transfer fees, particularly right now, knowing that Villa has a small squad and has a one of the smaller squads probably in the Premier League and probably needs a couple of players in um but I'd, i'm more than happy if villa are not willing to be held to ransom 
and uh, wait until the summer to get the exact targets that Unai Emery wants. It also means there might be one or two youth players we see get more game time. Cameron Archer going to Middlesbrough, now that Ings is away at West Ham. I do wonder whether that loan would have gone through had Ings gone before. Maybe Arch the loan was agreed and then, you know, Ings the bid came in for Ings and it was for Emery too good to turn down. I have full faith in Unai Emery. Uh, I'm super excited with what he's doing. I think Moreno, uh, you know, £13 million from Real Betis. He's had uh, a good start to life at Villa already. Um, and, you know, he Emery likes to play with two left-backs or did at Villarreal. You know, one left-back in front of the other. Moreno has the appearance of someone who could be a, a, a winger. Um, so, you know, he may in the coming months sit ahead of Luca Dean and that will be interesting to see develop um, and then Jon Duran one of the highest rated young players in the world 15 million pounds from the MLS from Chicago Fire um, obviously not really expecting much from him you know in the, in the near future um, but you know he's more than likely going to get some decent game time he's 19 years of age he's going to be working with one of the best managers in the world, one of the best coaches, somebody who's so dedicated and will identify weak points in his game and help strengthen uh, strengthen him where he needs to be improved and hopefully get him ready and um, capable of, of being a really, really strong player in the Premier League. So I'm excited to see what happens with Duran. Um, so yes, uh, there's not long to go in the transfer window. Villa could pull out a loan sign-in or, uh, you know, they may make a big sign-in. Um, but I, I'm not really holding out hope for that. Um, I'm absolutely fine with it. I don't think there's a reason to to panic. Yes, it could cost us um, as the season goes on. But, um, you know, fair enough. Uh, I, I fully back Emery. So thank the gods there is an Aston Villa game this weekend. Otherwise, it would be another 48 hours of not knowing what the hell to do with myself. Villa are playing Leicester at home. Now, Leicester, what is going on with them this season, huh? Looked like they were getting their act together uh, just before the World Cup. James Madison um, was playing out of his skin, but Madison got an injury. Hasn't really featured as much since uh, we came back from the World Cup. And uh, Leicester's form has just fallen off a cliff, really. They've lost four of the last five. Their away form since uh, the World Cup break has been losing to Liverpool 2-1. Uh, they lost to Nottingham Forest 2-0. They also lost away at Newcastle uh, in the League Cup 2-0. Um, but they did get a decent result recently, a 2-2 against uh, Brighton. Now, I'm going to get that up just to look at their lineup. And James Madison did come off the bench for them. So, you know, I'm sure Leicester fans will be hopeful that he's getting back to it. Uh, but, uh, you know, they played a 4-4-2, which is interesting. They played that at home. It's not a formation I really associate much with uh, Leicester or Brendan Rodgers. So if they're to do a 4-4-2 again against Aston Villa, you know, it'd be interesting to see how the two formations go against each other because Villa also play a very fluid 4-4-2. And uh, you'd think Villa would probably be better condition to it uh, than Leicester are, you know, they've, if they've only just started using that formation. But I think something to to know about Villa is that in our home games, uh, we haven't actually been very good in the first half against Liverpool, Wolves and Leeds. In all of those games, you would say we were pretty much dominated. Um, so that's probably been the sort of the weakest area uh, since Professor Unai <laughs> Professor Uno, uh, Uno Emery came into uh, into the Villa. Uh, you know, obviously the two cup exits were very frustrating. Um, but um, yeah, you would probably look at uh, the, those um, home games in those first halves. They've not been good, and uh, there's a couple where Wolves could have been well ahead of us. They ended up being one nil, and we came back. Liverpool could have been well ahead, uh, even though we did have a lot of chances as well. Uh, and then Leeds again, we were one nil up, but really they pretty much dominated. But in all three of those games, Uno Emery made adjustments in game changes and uh, ultimately Villa came back in the second half and were a lot better. 
But the thing is, I think what you do want to see now is you want to see Villa have a full 90 minutes against Leicester uh, at home where they are really informed. So it's not one dodgy half and one good half. It's 90 minutes have been really good. And Leicester, with their form at the moment, though it was a decent draw against Brighton uh, at home, well, I say decent. It's a game they'd have wanted to win, really. Um, but I guess it's better than losing all the time. Um, but, you know, with Madison coming back now, could be an influential presence. You would expect Bubakar Kamara to be somebody who maybe is, has to target him specifically, as he did against James Will Prowse at Southampton. Uh, and if you stop Madison, it just feels at the moment like Leicester haven't really got much else going on. Um, but, you know, um, like I say, they're, they still have some very good players uh, and Villa haven't been all that convincing in their home games uh, recently. Um, so uh, it's, it's a it's a tough one to predict, but you should say that Villa should go into that game really thinking uh, they can win it. And if they do, up onto 31 points, uh, up over 30 points already, uh, considering where we were when Gerard left, uh, would be amazing. It would be six wins and eight under Uno Emery. And to be honest, it then might, means that Europe, yeah, that's a real chance Villa can can get there. Um, but of course, you know, I'm kind of also expecting a few hiccups along the way this season, uh, a few tough games, you know, as we get used to the, you know, Emery, uh, Emery style. Um, but, but yeah, I think Leicester's definitely a game that Villa should really be aiming to win. And hopefully the lads go out there and do it. So that's it from me. Uh, thank you again for watching me just sitting here on my own, looking down a camera lens, talking about Villa. But I love the Villa so much. Uh, it's such a passion uh, that I could talk about it for the rest of my life, I think. Uh, and the best bit is that uh, we've been able to meet lots of fellow Villa fans through this podcast, make lots of new friends and engage with the thoughts of other Villa fans. So please, if you have any thoughts about what I've just said about the transfer window, about the upcoming Leicester game as well, just uh, let's chat about it in the comment section below uh, here on YouTube. Or if you're listening on audio, just email in or villanofilla at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, we can chat all you want about it and uh, have a good old time supporting Aston Villa. But until this weekend, that's it from me. Up the Villa. Mm -hmm.